What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. Now in today's video, we'll be talking about the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4, which I pulled up the specs for on the right side of the display. And we're also going to compare it to the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. I pulled up those specs on the left side. Now, as for this video, it's featured on the Samsung Galaxy playlist. You can find information related to this topic quickly and easily. And as always, please be sure to leave your questions or comments down below in regards to this topic, as it may inspire future videos. And just a note, I'm not paid by Samsung to talk about the Z Fold series. I own the Z Fold 3 and truly enjoy it. And I believe foldables are the future. Now, that being said, I know I haven't talked about pixels in some time, and that's because I'm waiting for a foldable pixel. And the good news is there are rumors there have been rumors for a really long time now about a google pixel foldable notepad but nothing has actually come into existence so i'm hoping something is coming soon and that way i could talk more about pixel hardware again as always we only feature products or services i buy use or i'm interested in now you can find items related to the z fold 4 at the amazon storefront link in the description below all things said let's go ahead and get into it. So first we're going to start with design and we're going to talk about colorways. Now for the Fold 4, we do carry over the Phantom Black again, which is nice to see. I'm a minimalist, so of course I like black. But we do have a green variation carrying over again, although it varies from the last gen green variation. So for the Fold 4, we're going to have a gray green, and for the Fold 3, we had that Phantom Green. Now, if I had to choose between a green, I would go with the Phantom Green. I like that one a little bit more than this Gray Green. This Gray Green looks a little too gray for me in this image, but maybe it looks a little more green in real life, or maybe depending on the angle that you hold the device, it goes from green to a gray. That would be pretty cool. And then we have Beige, and it looks like that's replacing Phantom Silver. Personally, I don't choose light colors when it comes to hardware just because it seems like they pick up more dirt and again i like those darker colors so all things being said if i had to judge which gen had the better colors i would say the full three that phantom green was just a little bit better of course we're neutral with the black because it's the same on the full three and the full four and i think the phantom silver is a little bit more attractive than the beige in my opinion so scrolling down here, we're going to have dimensions and weight. We're going to pull these up side by side so we can do a comparison. Now, these are going to be very small changes. What you'll notice the most here is that the bezel here is thinned down on the Fold 4. And it looks like that's happening all around the device. So interesting enough, measured diagonally, this cover display is going to be the same size on the Fold 3 and the Fold 4. But what you're going to get is a slightly wider display. That being said, the width of the phone hasn't changed. It's still 67.1 millimeters. But as for height, we are going to be a little shorter. And I think that's going to be better because it's going to improve the ratio of the phone. It's going to be a little bit more squared versus more rectangle. I think that's beneficial. It's going to improve the viewing experience but it's also going to help with handling. And then you can see that we have the hinge. So the hinge is going to be a little bit tighter on the Fold 4. And also we have sagging. So sagging is going to be a little bit tighter on the Fold 4 also, which means that when we close the device, it should be a little bit more compact. Again, these are very small changes, but little changes like this add up and they should help with the device, like how compact it is and holding it. Moving on here, we're going to talk about the main display here, and we're going to have the same theme that we had from the cover display. So we're going to see that the bezels are going to be thinned out all around here. That's going to give the display a slightly bigger uh, footprint. Interesting enough though, it still measures the same diagonally as the full three. Now what's interesting here is that the measurement of the width of the phone, it is slightly wider than the Fold 3. And again, we have that emphasis on the height of the device is going to be shorter. So again, this is going to square the phone a little bit. And then if we scroll down here, we're going to have weight. 
So the Fold 4 is going to weigh a little bit less than the Fold 3. I'm not sure this will be very noticeable, but again, every little bit adds up. So this should help with actually holding the device. It should make it feel a little bit more bearable. And then we have the display. So if we look at this first glance, it appears nothing has really changed. But again, all of this relates to the thinning of the bezels. So if we look at the Fold 4, you can see that our display ratio here is going to be 21.6 to 18. And that compares to the Fold 3's 22.5 to 18. Now, if we look underneath here as well, you can see that it's 2176 by 1812 for the Fold 4. That compares to the 2208 by 1768 for the Fold 3. Now, pixels per inch, that's going to remain the same. And everything else looks pretty much the same. And then we're going to scroll down to the cover screen. You're going to see, again, pretty similar here. So everything looks the same, except if we take a look at that ratio, it's 23.1 to 9. That compares to the full threes, 24.5 to 9. And then again, if we look at the measurement here, it's 2316 by 904 compared to 2268 by 832. Now, interesting enough, pixels per inch is going to be a little different here. So we're going to have 402 for the Fold 4 compared to the 387 for the Fold 3. So that's a little bit of an improvement. And then moving on, we have the S Pen. So this is pretty much going to be the same. Now, the thing I will say about the S Pen is it's a love-hate relationship. Uh, it's good to have it, but there is no place to store it on device. There is no little spot where you just stick the, the S Pen into a slot and then it's just there. You need a case to accommodate it. Now, personally, I don't use the S Pen all that much, not because it's bad or anything. I've tried using it, but it just doesn't feel like it's necessary in my opinion. So I don't have a problem with the S Pen not being able to be stored somewhere. Now, as for the S Pen, nothing's really changed here. I'm taking a look at the list. The list looks pretty similar. It just looks a little more spaced out. There might be some minor changes, but again, nothing huge going on here. So we will scroll down here to the camera. And the camera, again, this is going to be where we're going to see some changes that might favor a content creator or someone taking photos or video. Now, when it comes to the cover camera, nothing's really changing here. The field of view uh, changes a little bit more for the Fold 4 ever so slightly. We've got 85 degrees compared to the Fold 3's 80 degrees, uh, but everything else looks the same here. Moving on to the front camera, we're going to see, again, not a lot is changing here. We've got the same four megapixels, pixel size is the same, field of view is the same, the aperture is the same. Moving on, we're going to have the rear cameras, and this is where the change is happening that's going to favor those content creators. So camera one is going to carry over from the full three. Nothing's really changing here, but we're going to scroll up a little bit so we could take a look at camera two. Camera two is going from a 12 megapixel wide angle to a 50 megapixel wide angle. So that's gonna be very helpful. The field of view changes by a few degrees. Pixel size is going down a little bit. Aperture is going to remain the same. And then we have that camera three. I'm going to just try to scroll up here just a little bit. It's going to go from a 12 megapixel to a 10 megapixel. So we're going down a little bit. The field of view is also decreasing slightly, uh, but everything else is going to remain the same. It looks like so it'll be interesting to see how that changes. But as for features, camera features, intelligent features, camera modes, they're going to be pretty much the same here. Nothing is really changing all that much. We've got the useful features. That's not really changing all that much. Camera settings menu, not really changing all that much. We've got the AR features. Those will remain pretty much the same. And then we have video recording. And again, this goes along the lines with content creation. So a lot hasn't really changed here. But with the Fold 4, we do have 8K video recording at 24 frames per second now. Now I have mixed feelings about that. Of course, it's cool to say, you know, my, my camera shoots in 8K. 
But on the other side, who's actually watching an 8K? Otherwise, though, we still carry over the 4K UHD, the 1080p FHD, the 720p HD. So those will remain the same. We still have all the shoot and speed options here. Just taking a quick glance. And then we have other. The other is going to be very similar here as well. Not a lot is changing. So if we move down here, we're going to have performance starting with battery capacity that carries over. I was not expecting a change in the battery just because this device is so thin. You can only cram so much into the fold phone. So no surprise here. Charging, we'll see a little bit of change here. This may be favorable to some. Personally, I haven't had a problem with charging. I have been fine with the charging speed that we had, but having super fast charging, I'm not going to complain at all. That's going to be a benefit. Now, I do want to talk about battery life a little bit or battery performance, I should say. Now, I know a lot of people will complain that battery performance has been bad for this device, but I think it's important to keep in mind that when you have a device that unfolds, you have a large main display and that main display is essentially almost twice the size of your standard smartphone display that's out there these days. So naturally you're going to consume a bit more power. That being said, when I think about that, when I, when I think about the fact that we have two displays and that main display is so large, I have been getting home around 5, 6 p.m. and I have anywhere between 10 and 25% remaining. Depends on what you think. Now, for me, I will say that throughout the day, I drive a lot for work. I constantly have the display on, mainly the cover display. Um, but I do go to that main display when I am reading news or watching videos on a break or on a lunch. So overall, I'm realistic with the battery performance. Now, I would like to see an improvement in battery optimization. I think that would be great. That way, maybe we could get to, you know, 8, 9 p.m. and maybe be in that 10 percent to 25 percent range. I think that would be really acceptable. Uh, but I think if you're using the device for a lot of the day, for a majority of the day, and you get home at between 5, 6 p.m. and you have 15 to 25 percent remaining, I don't think that's horrible. That's just my experience, though. And then moving on, we have network and connectivity. These are going to be pretty much the same here. We have AP. And then we have memory and not a lot is changing here, except for the fact that you do have that one terabyte option. Now I was originally going to say, I don't find a need for that. But if you are looking to future proof yourself, again, we have the possibility to shoot an 8K on the Fold 4 now, which is just crazy. You may want to opt for that one terabyte option if you're going to go that route. Again, I don't see a lot of people going that route because we can't really watch much 8K content yet. Not a lot of people have access to that. But if you do want to future proof yourself, the one terabyte option is available. And then we have expandable memory and SIM card. So we have some information on the SIM card here. But as you can see, there's nothing about expandable memory. Nothing new there. I think a lot of devices are going away from that. You can still get some devices with expandable memory, but again, you're not gonna get that here. Uh, the OS is going to ship with Android 12 compared to Android 10 that shipped with the Fold 3. Makes sense, this is a newer device. Audio is going to remain mostly unchanged. Video is going to remain mostly unchanged. Water resistance. That is going to remain the same. Again, unchanged, we've got that IPX8 rating. So this is this is important. We're going to take a look here. Not advised for beach or pool use and not dust resistant. I think not dust resistant is, is uh, very important here. What I find most interesting is Samsung will ship a case with this phone and it is better than last year's case but it has no hinge protection, which I don't really understand because this device is not dust resistant. I think at minimum, Samsung should, they should see themselves as obligated to put out a case that has hinge protection. I think that is a fail on their part for this device. 
I, I don't understand it. But that being said, if you are buying this device, the Fold 4, or even if you're buying the Fold 3 because you can get a good deal on it, I think you have to have some kind of protection for that hinge. Now that being considered, there are a few cases I would recommend. First, we have the Spigen Tough Armor. Now that's not going to provide 100% hinge cover protection. I would say it's more along the routes of 80%, but at least it covers it from scratches. Now, the only con to that case is there is some space on the top and the bottom of the hinge that are exposed. So if you drop it on, if you drop the fold four on its edge, that could lead to damage. But that means that there's also some space for dust to get in still. But I will say that case is one of the cases that works best with controllers and mounts because it also unfolds flat. You don't have a teetering effect that you would get from other cases. That being said, the other case I would recommend would be the VRS Design Tear Guard Active. Now, we were just talking about that teetering effect or the seesaw effect. This case is going to give you that, but the benefit of this case will be that you have virtually 100% hinge protection. You're going to have the least chance of dust getting into that hinge, so it's going to be well protected from dust. The con to that case is that it is going to be hard to fit into some controllers and into some mounts. However, I will say that that case is priced really well in comparison to say a Spigen that's very similar. It comes in at a lower price and it does just as good of a job, but I think it also looks more attractive. Now I'll link the Samsung Galaxy Amazon storefront in the description below so you can find those cases if you are interested in them. Moving on, we have sensors and buttons. That's going to remain mostly unchanged as well. We have security. Security is going to be really good for this device. It's comparable to the full three. Authentication, that's going to be the same. We've got the payment. That is going to be the same as well. Intelligence, all of this is mainly carrying over from the full three. We've got Bixby again, even though you, my, 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 a lot of people don't know what Bixby is. A lot of people won't be using Bixby. I personally don't use Bixby. I, I put the Google Assistant on right away. We get that up and running. Uh, that's one of the first things I change. Customization, that's carrying over. We've got edge lighting. Video wallpaper carrying over. AOD, always on display. That's a cool acronym. Pretty much everything's the same here as well. So we'll just skip through this. We've got Galaxy themes. Those are pretty similar. Accessibility features. Now I do wanna to touch on accessibility features because I have noticed that there are viewers who watch the content and they have accessibility questions. So feel free to take a look here. Again, not a lot is changing. Everything just like pretty much everything else is carrying over from the Fold 3. So you can expect essentially the same accessibility features. And moving on in the box, this is the last thing to really cover here. Everything is going to be the same. So you're going to get the device, the data cable, the ejection pin, the quick start guide. Now, interesting enough, again, we have that super fast charging now for the Fold 4. But as you can read here, as you can see, the 24 watt power adapter is sold separately. So I do have a battery and charging Amazon storefront where I've listed power adapters that go above this 25 watt. It's definitely higher than that. And if you're interested, you can click on that link in the description below. You can find an adapter that's going to support the super fast charge in there. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now there are three ways you can support the content. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or would buy and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way you can show your support is just by sharing this content with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way you can show your support is just by clicking the subscribe button. Now liking and subscribing are important. Those are your ways to vote on whether you like the content. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, 
and listening to. As always, thanks for watching and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon checking out. Yeah.